Good morning, I welcome you to this session. Uh, today, we will discuss about the principles of physical similarity as applied to fluid machines. At the outset, I will discuss in a brief, I will discuss in brief the principle of similarity in general applied to any fluid flow problem. As you know, the solutions to engineering problems are determined mostly from experiments. <coughs> now, due to certain reasons, for example, uh, economic reasons, econ due to economic conditions, saving of time and ease of investigations, it is not possible in a number of instances to <coughs> perform the laboratory experiments under the identical conditions of the operating variables that exists in practice. So, what happens is that we have to perform the experiments in our laboratory under altered set of conditions from the actual problems existing in practice. These say conditions or the operating variables refer in case of fluid flow problems as geometrical dimensions pressures, flow velocity like that. You know that uh, geometrical dimensions for example, we may not perform the experiments in laboratory of the full scale system as existing in practice because of the availability in floor space. Sometimes we may not cover the range of pressure or flow velocities as happen in practice because of the restrictions in the laboratory experiments. Similar may be the cases for using the particular fluid in actual using the particular fluid which is actually used in practice. So, therefore, we see that the laboratory tests are always performed under altered conditions of the operating variables that are existing in practice. Now, the two pertinent questions now come or arise out of these situations. What are those questions? Number one is that how can you apply the results or the test results from laboratory experiments? to the actual problems at a different set of conditions. Number two is that if the performance of a system is governed by a number of independent operating parameters, then a huge experiments, a huge experiments, a number of experiments are required to find out the influence of each and every independent operating parameters on the performance of the system. Now, is it possible by any way to reduce this number of experiments to a lesser one? For example, we can vary one or two independent operating parameters to predict the influence of all the operating parameters on the performance of the system to save huge time, energy and money. So, the a positive clue in answering these two questions lies in the principles of physical similarity. So, it is the principle of physical similarity which makes it possible and justifiable to apply the test results from laboratory under altered set of conditions to the actual problem in practice at a different set of conditions. And also to perform a lesser number of experiments with the variation of a lesser number of independent operating parameters to predict the influence of a large number of independent operating parameters on the performance of a system. So, how it is done? Let us see that a in a if a process for example, is governed by a number of variables. Let we ex express a process as a functional relationship of all the variables. Let a process is denoted or a process is expressed by m variables, m physical variables describe a process. Therefore, the process can be expressed as a functional and an implicit functional relationship like that. If these variables are expressed by n fundamental units, n is the number of fundamental units, n is the number of fundamental units, number of fundamental units. Then, 
we know that by the use of dimensional analysis, it can be proved that the functional relationship of all the dimensional variables of the problem can be expressed by m minus n number of dimensionless terms known as pi terms. This you know m minus n. That means we get m minus n is equal to the number of dimensionless number of dimensionless number of dimensionless terms known as pi terms. So, you see the number of independent variables were reduced from m to m minus n where the variables are dimensionless variables and known as pi terms. So, these variables are a combination, some combination, some specific combinations of the dimensional variables in a sense that each and every dimensionless variables which describe the problem now can be made like this, which describe the problem is now dimensionless. So, therefore, we see that these dimensionless numbers as the independent variables are much less as compared to the number of dimensional variables. And these pi terms, each pi terms, all the pi terms rather represents the condition of similarity, represents the condition or criteria of similarity. What is meant by similarity? Now, you see what is meant by similarity. As I told earlier that similarity is that clue which gives a positive answer to the question that how can you apply the test results under an altered set of conditions to the actual problem in practice. This can be done if for a particular problem that means when the physics of the problem is fixed that means for a particular problem if we maintain the similarity conditions. How, how can it be maintained that if a particular class of problem is studied under a conditions where the entire physical similarity is maintained, then we tell that the physical similarity between the problems are maintained. What are those similarities? Let us see. These are geometrical similarity, <coughs> geometrical similarity. kinematic similarity, similarity and dynamic similarity. Now, if we identify a particular class of problem, then the geometrical similarity between two problems of the same class is attained when the ratio of one length of a system to the corresponding length of the other system bears a fixed ratio. Similarly, the kinematic similarity is attained when the motion or the velocity of a particle or a point of one system corresponding to the velocity of the same point of the other system or the corresponding point to the other system bears a fixed ratio. Similarly, dynamic similarity is the similarity of force when the force in one system, the ratio of force in one system to the corresponding force or force to the corresponding point of the other system bears a fixed ratio. That means, this means the geometrical similarity is the similarity of shape that means they are proportionate in shape. Kinematic similarity is the similarity of motion that means when the motions of the corresponding points between the two systems are same. Similarly, the forces at the corresponding, the ratio of the forces at the corresponding points between the two systems is same, the similarity is known as dynamic similarity. Now, the question is that how do you know that this similarity prevails between the two systems of the same type of problem when these dimensionless terms remain the same. Now, you see that the operating variables may vary, but the dimensionless terms for the two systems remain same. Then we ensure that the similarity is obtained and then the laboratory tests can be used to predict the actual performance and we can reduce the number of experiments to in 
predict the influence of a large number of parameters. Now, this can be well explained if we consider a pipe flow problem. Let us consider a pipe flow problem. The flow takes place, a pipe flow problem. The flow takes place. Now, we know that delta P, the pressure difference over a length L, let the pressure difference over a length L delta P by L in this type of problem is a function of the flow velocity V. Let the V is the flow velocity. Well, is the function of the diameter of the pipe, function of the density of the liquid, viscosity of the liquid. So, therefore, we see that the pressure drop per unit length in case of a pipe flow problem where the flow is governed by the pressure force and the viscous force depends on the flow velocity, diameter of the pipe, density of the pipe and the viscosity of the pipe. This is a very simple problem as we have already, start, uh, already studied earlier. So, that we can write that the problem can be described by like this. That means, the problem of pipe flow can be described by five dimensional variables. That is pressure drop per unit length, the flow velocity, the diameter of the pipe, the density of the liquid and the viscosity of the liquid. So, now if we apply the dimensional analysis to find out the pi terms as the criteria of similarity. So, first we see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 that means the number of variables m is equal to 5. Now, these variables can be expressed by three fundamental dimensions that means the number of fundamental dimensions is equal to 3. So, therefore, number of pi terms, number of pi terms is equal to 5 minus 3 is equal to 2. What are those pi terms if we find out by any method of dimensional analysis? As you know, there are two methods. One is the Buckingham pi theorem, another is the Rayleigh's inditial method. So, if we take V, rho and D as repeating variables, as repeating variables, pi 1 comes like this delta p by rho v square into d by l and pi 2 comes as rho v d by mu. As you know, this pi 1 is defined as the friction factor and pi 2 is defined as Reynolds number. But what we observe is that this number is a dimensionless number, this number is also a dimensionless number. So, therefore, the pipe flow problem you see is now expressed in terms of two dimensionless number like this function of delta p by rho v square into d by l and rho v d by mu. So, instead of 5 variables, now these 2 variables pi 1 and pi 2 <coughs> describe the problem. So, the one thing is very clear now, if we make the experiments of pipe flow problem in laboratory or if you consider the 2 systems of pipe flow problem, the pressure drop, the velocity, the diameter, the length, the density and viscosity of the liquid may vary. To maintain the similarity, what we have to do? The pi terms that means pi 1 and pi 2 terms that is typical combinations of these two or the typical combinations of the variables in this fashion have to be maintained same. That means, even if the variations are there in the two sets of experiments in respect of dependent independent dimensional variables, but the ranges of the non-dimensional term should be made fixed to maintain the similarity. That, that means, if you perform the experiments in pipe flow problem in laboratory, we will have to choose our density of the fluid, viscosity of the fluid, velocity of flow, diameter of the pipe in such a way that the typical combinations denoting the pi terms must be same or within the same range as it happens in actual practice. And another very important thing is that we can immediately show, we can immediately show that the relationship can be expressed for example this this functional relationship can be expressed as 
d by l that is it is a function of rho v d by mu. That means friction factor is a function of Reynolds number. That means we can express by a single curve for a particular <coughs> problem that is a laminar flow for example or both laminar and turbulent flow combined with the flow in a smooth pipe. So, relationship between friction factor and Reynolds number. Now, this relationship shows that the variation of friction factor with Reynolds number. Now, the pressure drop in a pipe flow problem may vary with different input parameters like velocity of flow, diameter of pipe, density of the liquid, viscosity of the liquid. But we may vary any one of them to show the influence of others. That means, for example, in laboratory, if we vary the velocity v, we can change the Reynolds number and we can find out the corresponding friction factor. For example, if this be the Reynolds number, this is the friction factor. And we can choose the velocity of flow to be to vary to represent the variation of rho d mu because in a laboratory it is very difficult to vary the diameter. We have to go for different pipes. If we want to vary the density to show, show its influence, then we have to take different liquids. Similar is the case for viscosity. But if we simply vary the velocity of flow which is done very easily by controlling a valve in a particular pipe using a fixed liquid, then we can vary the Reynolds number and we can show its influence on f. And through that we can tell also the influence of rho and d. For example, if velocity is doubled means that rho may be doubled, d may be doubled or mu may be halved. That means a change in Reynolds number may be brought by a change in any of the parameters. So, with a change in one parameter we can show the influence of other parameters. Now, it is clear how the similarity between the two system of the same class of problem can be made. What are the criteria of similarity? These are the pi terms, they are found by a dimensional analysis and then we can predict the influence of all the operating dimensional variables on the performance of the system by performing a lesser number of experiments by varying a lesser number of independent operating parameters. Now, the same physical principle, now if we apply to a fluid machines, let us find out if we apply to a fluid machines. Now, therefore, we will have to recognize first the variables. So, physical variables, physical variables describing physical variables in a fluid machines. That means describing the problem of fluid machine. So, we have to first find out the physical variables in a fluid machine. What are those? This is D. Let us first D which is equal to a characteristic, a characteristic, a characteristic dimension, a characteristic dimension of the machine a characteristic dimension of fluid machine of the machine, a characteristic dimension of the machine, which is usually the rotor diameter, which is usually the usually the rotor diameter. Well, the characteristic dimension then comes Q volume flow rate through the machine, volume flow rate n rotational speed rotational speed then h the head across the machine head across the machine, head across the machine, then density the fluid property let density of the fluid, let density of the fluid, these are the rheological properties of the fluid, then mu viscosity of the fluid viscosity of the fluid, then E the coefficients of elasticity, then 
g comes always acceleration due to gravity acceleration due to gravity and then p power transferred power transferred between fluid and rotor. Now, we see that these are the physical variables in general in a fluid machine handling a compressible fluid. Let us first talk about compressible fluid. D a characteristic dimension of the machine which is usually the rotor diameter. Q is the volume flow rate through the machine n is the rotational speed, h is the head across the machine. That means, this is the head. In case of a turbine, this is the head given up by the fluid or in case of a pump or compressor, this is the head developed by the fluid. That means, the head across the machine. Then these are the liquid property or fluid properties, the density, the viscosity and coefficient of elasticity which comes when the compressibility of the fluid comes into consideration, which is not beyond the scope of this class. Of course, we are uh, discussing the fluid machines handling incompressible fluid, but general com coefficient of elasticity comes when the compressibility is taken care of or the fluid handles the compressible fluid machine handles the compressible fluid. G the acceleration due to gravity and P is the power transferred between fluid and rotor. That means, the difference between P and H is taken care of by the hydraulic efficiency. This is the power transfer between fluid and rotor and this is the head across the machine. You must understand the difference between these two. That means, in case of turbine, it is the head that is being given that is being given by the fluid to the rotor and this is the power which is being obtained by the rotor. So, difference is there in terms of the hydraulic efficiency. Similarly, in case of pump, this is the power which is being received by the rotor and head H is the head developed by the fluid machines. Now, in almost all cases in fluid machines, the free surface does not exist. So, the variation or the influence of G is neglected because the influence of G in any problem comes when there is a free surface. So, when there is no free surface, the problems without a free surface, the variation of G we do not take care and this G is rather coupled here with G H. Instead of G, we take G H as the variable rather than G. So, therefore, we arrive at these number of variables, these variables d, q, n, g, h that means energy per unit mass across the machine. It is not the head g, h, then rho, then mu, then e, then p. Then how many variables we do have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, therefore, we see that 8 variables describe the problems in fluid machines. That means, now we can write this, the functions of these 8 variables that means, d, q, n, g, h, rho, mu, e, p is 0. Now, to seek for the pi terms as the criteria of similarity, what we have to do? We have to apply the we have to apply the dimensional analysis. Here the number of variables is 8 and number of fundamental dimensions to express these variables are 3 mass length and time. So, therefore, the number of pi terms m minus n is equal to 5. That means, number of pi terms number of pi terms is equal to 5. Well, if we take d n and rho as the repeating variables, then we get the pi terms like that pi 1 as q by n d q pi 2 g h by n square d square pi 3 rho n d square by mu. By the typical 
analysis of Buckingham pi theorem, we get those terms pi 4 is equal to p by rho n cube d 5 and pi 5 as e by rho n square d square. So, we get this 5 distinct pi terms q by n d q, pi 2 is g h by n square d square, pi 3 is rho n d square by mu, pi 4 is p by rho n cube d 5 and pi 5 is e by rho n square d square. Now, let us see, let us try to recognize the physical interpretations or significance of these pi terms. What are the physical significances of these pi terms? Let us first consider the first pi term because all these pi terms represent now the principle of similarity or the similarity criteria. That means, if we make a test on fluid machines under altered set of conditions, we will have to make these pi terms same with the actual cases. So, let us con see the physical significances of the pi terms. Let us consider the first pi term pi 1. It is q by n d q, which can be written in this fashion q by d square divided by n d. Now, this q by d square can be written as this that q is the volumetric flow rate and d square is the area. So, that by q by d square represents a characteristic fluid velocity. So, we can write it as a characteristic, a characteristic, a characteristic fluid velocity, a characteristic fluid velocity, let V. And N D is the characteristic rotor velocity, very good, a char characteristic rotor velocity, rotor velocity, very good. So, therefore, the pi term represents let u, the ratio is proportional to the ratio of characteristic fluid velocity to rotor velocity. So, what is then pi 2 terms? Pi 2 is equal to g h by n square d square. What is this pi 2 term? g h by n square d square. Now, if we See, the numerator is the energy, total energy of the fluid either gained or given and denominator represents the square of the rotor velocities. To get a more clear idea, if we multiply or divided by pi 2 by pi 1 square, what we get? It is g h by n square d square and what is that? Pi 1 square is pi 1 is q by d square by n d, that means q by d square by n d, sorry, it is divided by, that means n square d square divided by q by d square whole square, all right. That means, we can tell that pi 2 by pi 1 square, this is equal to g h divided by q by d square whole square, which is proportional to total fluid energy, total fluid energy divided by the kinetic energy. Now, here you see that this pi 2 term alone represents the total fluid energy divided by some energy representative of the rotor velocity. So, therefore, we have to make a manipulations with the pi 1 terms. So, any combinations of the pi terms also represent another pi term that is a corollary of the pi theorem as a similarity parameter. So, pi 2 by pi 1 square is also a similarity parameter which represents the total fluid energy to the kinetic energy of the fluid. Now, we come to the third pi term, third pi term represents rho n d square by mu. What is the physical significance? Very simple it is rho n d, we take separately d by mu. So, you see that n d is the characteristic rotor velocity. So, this is a short of Reynolds number, Reynolds number 
based on rotor velocity, based on u, the rotor velocity. We can make the Reynolds number based on fluid velocity if you multiply with pi 1. That means, rho n d d divided by mu, if you just multiply with pi 1. What is pi 1? Q by d square by n d, that means, Q by n d q. So, in that case, it becomes rho Q by d square d by mu. That means, it becomes the Reynolds number, Reynolds number based on fluid velocity. That means, pi 3 is the representation of the Reynolds number based on rotor velocity or you make a combination with pi 1 like this, we get the Reynolds number based on fluid velocity. Then we come to pi 4. What is the physical significance of pi 4, this combination? P by rho n cube d phi. P is very straightforward thing, there is the power transfer between the fluid and the rotor. But what is rho n cube d phi? As such, it does not come out to be a physical, uh, does, does not give any physical concept rho n cube d phi. But what we can make? If we make this combination pi 4 divided by pi 1 pi 2, then what we get? P by rho n cube d phi. What is pi 1? Q by n d cube. So, n d cube by q and what is pi 2? G h by n square d square, that means n square d square by g h. So, therefore, we see this n and d almost cancels out. So, we get p by rho q g h. So, therefore, now we see that if we make a manipulations with pi 1 and pi 2, then we get this is equal to what? p by rho q g h. That means, power transferred between fluid and the rotor divided by the total head available by the fluid or gained by the fluid. That means, in case of turbine, it is nothing but eta h in case of turbines. Obviously, because p is the power available by the rotor, power transferred to the rotor and this is the head available by the fluid. That means, head given up by the fluid or 1 by eta h in case of pumps, in case of pumps 1 by eta h, because in case of pumps it reads that p is the input power to the rotor and rho q g h is the head developed by the fluid. So, therefore, pi 4 by pi 1 pi 2 represents the hydraulic efficiency or 1 by hydraulic efficiency depending upon whether it is a turbine or a pump. Now, we come to the last one pi 5. What is pi 5? As we have straightforward obtained is E by rho n square d square. Now, if we make this pi 1 by root over pi 5, that means we can write this way E by rho square root with little adjustment and then n d well, and what is pi 1? Q by d square, sorry, it is other way, I am sorry, I am sorry, I am sorry, pi 1 by root pi. That means, it will be n d, denominator will be root over E by rho and what is pi? Q by d square and n d. That means, n d as a whole cancels, this become equal to, this becomes uh, this is equal to q by d square by root over e by rho. Now, q by d square is proportional to the characteristic fluid velocity and what is root over e by rho? Can you tell what is root over e by rho? e by rho is the velocity of sound in that medium. That means, velocity of sound in that fluid medium which we can write as a, acoustic velocity in the fluid medium and this ratio v by a is known as Mach number. So, therefore, we see the implication of pi 5 is the ratio of fluid velocity to the sound velocity, which can be directly obtained if we make a manipulation of pi 1 by root over pi 5. Okay, now, let us come back again 
to the basic pi terms. So, therefore, now we see the physical implications of each and every pi terms as the similarity parameters. That means, if these terms or the combinations of the basic variables in these fashions are maintained same in two kinds of investigation, the entire physical similarity is obtained. And we have found the physical significances of these parameters. In a fluid machine handling incompressible fluid, we can get rid of these parameters because there the compressibility is not coming into picture. And moreover, it has been found out that the influence of viscosity, liquid viscosity in a fluid machine is very much negligible as compared to the influences of other parameters. So, therefore, the variation of this third pi term pi 3 is also discarded. So, therefore, we only take or only we are left only with the pi terms pi 1, pi 2, pi 4, pi 5, pi, pi 1, pi 2, pi 4 only, this 3 pi term. So, therefore, the problem of fluid machine handling incompressible fluids are defined in terms of the dimensionless pi terms as these 3 pi terms only, pi 1, pi 2 and this is pi 1, this is pi 2 and this I give the nomenclature pi 4 as it came after this pi 3, so pi 1, pi 2, pi 4. So, these 3 dimensionless pi terms or dimensionless terms or 3 pi terms define the problem of fluid machines handling incompressible fluid, that means handling liquid. So, therefore, we see that if we express the functional relationship, relationship in terms of these 3 parameters, the similarity in the fluid machines are maintained. That means, a particular fluid machines of a particular geometrical shape will behave in a similar conditions provided this pi 1, pi 2, pi 4 are maintained same in all the machines, in all the machines even if the variables q, n, d, p, h vary. Okay. This is the principle of similarity, I will discuss it further in the next class. Thank you. Okay.